Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. Um, in today's video, I'm going to do another in my series of what's catching my eye um, in the Azure space. And we've got, um, I saw basically a blog post by, or a LinkedIn post by Clemens um, a week or so ago, um, talking about JSON structure. Now, I think I might have um, seen Clemens talk about this a couple of times in the past, but he's um, he's paused really sort of caught my eye and I wanted to have a little bit of a look into this a bit more. So here, um, what he's talking about is a new sort of, I guess like a, a layer on top of JSON schema to try and fill some of the gaps to make it easier to use JSON schema, but also support things like round tripping. So if you, if you read through this article, there's some really good stuff um, further down where he's talking about um, code generation here so you know the idea that you can take a JSON schema and you can kind of round trip it between um, you know sort of C-sharp classes, SQL database tables and so on and the idea is meant to make it much easier to build applications. Now one of the bits that I thought was quite interesting was some of the validation which is what I want to look at in this video. So the idea was, as an integration developer, can I potentially use um, JSON structure to help me do better validation of JSON messages? And I'll talk about why I think that's important for integration people. Now, to um, just to extend on the blog post, there's some really good documentation Clemens has been working on. So we've got things like JSON structure working group on GitHub here. There's loads of resources in here. And there's also the jasonstructure.org website where there's samples for all of the different um, code technologies and stuff like that. And you can see here we've got um, a .NET package on NuGet called JSON Structure, which is what I want to use in this video. And I'm, I'm basically going to base this video on what's in this page here. Now, my idea was in the integration world, um, if you particularly come from a biz talk background, mm -hmm. this idea of having an, an um, XSD schema that really strongly defines the structure of a message, so you can then make a lot of assumptions about that message in how you're going to use the data when you get a message coming in. Now, I think where Clemens is coming from a lot is around things like um, Service Bus and Event Hub, where you can have people can make assumptions about the data that they're picking up from that messaging infrastructure. And in the zero integration services world, we use those services, so JSON structure is really going to help us here. But I think what we can potentially do is um, have things like logic apps take a step towards where we were in BizTalk with strongly typed messages. So if you've been a logic app developer for a long time, the the typing around data was a lot looser than what we were used to historically. And that, that had lots of benefits, but there was also some challenges around that. So for example, you might do a parse JSON, paste a JSON message in, it generates a schema for you. And, and as long as your message wasn't overly complicated, you'd, usually you would get away with that. And you might do things like data transformations with, um, you know, liquid and stuff like that. And they, they would be able, you could make them work, but the thing you always struggled a bit with is that concept of a strongly typed message, which something you were very, you know, it was a foundation concept in biz talk, but it wasn't really the same in the Azure world. So here, what I'm going to look at is um, I've got a logic app here where I'm going to pass in a basic message to it. And I've got a JSON structure message here where we've we've basically just taken one of Clemens's samples from the um from the GitHub repo and you can see here I've just pasted that as in a compose shape so I'm going to receive the message and I'm going to validate it against this um JSON structure. So you can see here we've got um a set of typing around you know the different properties what they're expected to be some details around you know things like lengths for this person as an example and if you go into that json structure um definition there's a lot more detail around the different data types and how you can support more granular things and much tighter control around what this message is, is intended to be like now what I've done next is I'm basically going to call an inline function in the logic app. So if, if you're not familiar with logic apps, basically you can have a .NET project 
as part of your logic app and um, you can then sort of so if you, if you see down here I've got my .NET project and then I've got this um, function here which is the one I'm going to call so you can basically put some .NET code that will run in process in your logic app so here I'm going to pass in um, my JSON body from the input and then I'm going to pass in my JSON schema or JSON structure schema from the compose shape. Now what will happen is this will come and execute this function over here so it's really just a pretty pretty out of the box as your function at the top here but I'm going to I'm going to define my own custom object for my result and then here is really where I'm going to use um, the JSON structure SDK. So if you can see up at the top here, I added that package from NuGet, added the namespace, and then back down here, I'm doing this um, validate operation, and then I can basically check things like the errors and warnings that come back, and I can return them back to my logic app. Now, just to show a, a bit of what that looks like, um, if I go to Postman, for example, here, so here I've got a... Um, a message that's um, from one of the samples so if I run that sorry I just need to rerun my logic app which seems to have been disabled at some point Okay, so if we come back over here, so I can rerun that, and we can see here I've got a successful message that is valid. Now, if I go to the invalid request sample here and run this, and you'll see the thing that I changed is I made the name too long, so we get back that the, the message is invalid, and we get back a nice message telling me about what was actually incorrect here. So I know it was the first name field, and I can see what the issue with that was. So that, that's really nice. That's very much like what we were used to in BizTalk world, where we could validate against an XSD, and we'd, we'd get some good um, definitions of what the problems were. Now, if I go into my Logic App run history here, you'll see if I open one of these up, it's really just what we looked at before. So I've got my schema, and then I've got my um, my function call here. So really easy to use this. And I think the question next would be, what would we like the Logic App team to do with JSON structure as it becomes more adopted? So there's a couple of things I'd really like to see. The first one would be, instead of me having to write a custom function to do this, it would be great to have shapes that would support JSON structure. So if I could just add a shape in this workflow directly, where I could um, just put the, you know, put the um, JSON structure um, definition, I could pass in my message, and then I could just get some validation done. And then, you know, the the output of that shape, um, I can then do a, you know, a condition. So I can say if it's valid, do this, and if it's invalid, do something else. Maybe I could make it. Um, I could even maybe do something like make it an option on the the, um, the custom action the logic app team built. They could even say make it throw an error if it's not valid. So it's it's easy to do trigger your exception scenarios if you need to rather than having to do a condition every time. Um, the other thing I'd really like to see is rather than me having to continually paste stuff in here. Um, these schemas then become a bit of a pain to maintain across different workflows that might use them. So we're starting to see the Logic App team put folders over in the workflow here where they'll have, um, so I think we've got this artifacts folder as an example. So here you can see we've got maps, rules, schemas. Um, schemas are usually going to be for XML schemas at the minute, but it'd be really great if we could have additional folders or something where you could put these 
JSON structure definitions that you could then just use and they, they automatically get kind of compiled and built as part of the um, as part of this sort of workflow. And it's almost as well, it would be things like um, as part of that validation, I could then just have the concept of a BizTalk message, which is one of the things we don't have in Logic Apps these days. You're always referencing different actions, but maybe we could have with a JSON structure, we could validate against a message, and then I've got an instance of a message that I can update as I go through my workflow. So I've got this kind of, you know, this persistent state in the workflow that I can change as it goes through the workflow becomes mutable rather than, you know, having to um, refer back to like an, an action reference it, and I'm constantly creating additional copies of that message if it became. A, you know, a, a type in the workflow that I could go and change that would be really powerful. I think. Um, so this is me just um, spitballing some ideas around how, as an integration developer, I might use JSON structure. In this case, um, I was just talking about Logic app developers, but I'm sure Function app developers would find this massively useful for um, you know things like um, you know building types to use in my Function app receiving messages from service bus and validating them. I'm sure API management could use them for validating requests as well. Um, so I think this is really quite exciting for me and I'm um, looking forward to see how this project progresses.